Hello, this is Matt Slick from the Matt Slick Live podcast, where I defend the Christian faith and lay out our foundations of the truth of God's Word. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Looking for a deal on life insurance? Consider joining the Polish Roman Catholic Union of America, also known as PRCUA Life. PRCUA Life is a fraternal benefit society that offers a variety of different life insurance portfolios for all stages of life. PRCUA Life is also known for fixed index annuity plans with a yield of up to 3.25% API. As a fraternal organization, the PRCUA provides member benefits such as educational scholarships, sports tournaments, and numerous Polish-American cultural programs, and much more. Consider joining the PRCUA this week. This week. Now through April 15th, 2021, you can earn more money and lower your 2020 tax bill while boosting your retirement income. Open a new PRCUAL life annuity. Minimum deposit of $500 to take advantage of their competitive rates. Elite Plus is an eight-year annuity with a 3.75 APY, one-year guarantee, and minimum guarantee of 2%. So lower your taxable income while increasing your retirement. PRCUA.org. That's PRCUA.org. Welcome to If Not For God, stories of hopelessness that turn to hope. Here is your host, Mike Zwick. Welcome to If Not For God with Mike Zwick. It is a new year. As it says in the scripture, behold, I make all things new. And one of the things that I was thinking about this week was actually Romans 8.18, and it says that I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed within us. So the little bit of unjust suffering that we may face as Christians in this world is incomparable to the beauty and the glory of heaven. I'm sure when we uh, close our eyes on this earth and we open up our eyes in heaven— We'll probably forget about a lot of the problems and all the difficulties that we had on this earth because it'll be so glorious and so happy to be in heaven. So I was looking at something else, and it says that the cost of a stamp is 55 cents. And if I go to the post office and they overcharge me by 55 cents for the stamp, if I go back there and I say, hey, you guys overcharged me by 55 cents, and they say to me, okay— well, not only we're going to give you the 55 cents back, but you never have to pay income tax again for the rest of your life. I'm going to be pretty happy. And that's what it kind of reminds me of is that the little present sufferings that we have, whether it's, you know, we're having a problem with COVID or somebody's passing away or we're having trouble at work or whatever, it is incomparable to the glory that'll come within heaven. And so are you focusing on your problems? Are you focusing on all that is going wrong with you in this world and all the problems that you're having? Or are you focusing on Jesus? Because if you're focusing on the problems, you're going to be pretty depressed, you're going to be down, you're going to be out. But if you're focusing on Jesus, then you will have peace. As the old bumper sticker used to say, there's no Jesus, there's no peace. But if you know Jesus, then you truly will know peace. You know, I heard a story about how we go through tough times, and if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon talked about all the tough times that he was having, and sometimes in life, we suffer for the problems that other people have caused us. When couples go to counseling, a lot of times, whether it's for marriage counseling or if they're thinking about getting married, people will ask them, you know, well, do you have this in common or do you have that in common? But Jesus talked about marriage. He said the only reason for a divorce is fornication or if the person dies. And so I guess one of the questions that you have to ask if you're married is, are you truly committed to this marriage? Is this something that you just kind of, hey, you know, we fell in love, it was fun or whatever, but you can always fall out of love. You can always realize that maybe you didn't have as much in common as you thought you did. But for the Christian, it's a commitment. And that once you make that commitment, you're committed no matter what. And I, I know there's reasons, you know, somebody's running around or if the spouse is beating you up or something. I'm not talking about like that. But for the most part, I see so many marriages that just end in what they call no fault divorces. But It's not that simple. You have to try to stick it out no matter what. And in this new year, 2021, who knows what's going to happen? There could be persecution. There could be tough times ahead. Are you really, really committed to Christ? Or is it just something that you do, that you've done on Sundays or whatever? Because if things get tough for us as Christians, you have to make the decision now 
whether you're going to stick with Christ, whether you are truly committed to Christ, or whether this was just some nice accessory that you had. So that's something that you might want to think about this year is, are you a true follower of Jesus? And, and you know, we do serve a risen Savior. I heard a story, and it happened several years ago. It was a true story about a grandmother who had looked out her back window, and she saw her two-year-old granddaughter had fallen into the deep end of the pool. So the grandmother, of course, ran out the back of her house, jumped into the pool. Three hours later, the EMS came, and they got the grandmother and the two-year-old. They had to dig them out of the pool. They had both died. And the reason why they did that is because the grandmother, who had tried to save the granddaughter, could not swim. And so, (laughs) you know, if you're looking for someone to save you, they've got to be able to save They've got to do two things. Number one, they would have had to live a perfect and a sinless life. And number two, they would have to have risen from the grave. And so when we look to a Savior, I mean, if you look to Buddha, Buddha may have done some good things. He may have had some good teachings, but he's dead. When you look at Muhammad, he may have done some good things. He may have had some good teachings, but he's dead. So that's why I'm so glad that we serve a risen Savior. And if we believe in him, we have eternal life. There's a story that I've heard kind of going along with that where it says to uh, buy the rumor and sell the news. It's what, what people have done, I guess, historically in the stock market, where if they're investing in the stock market, they want to buy the rumor. So if they hear there's going to be a stimulus package coming out, and they buy on the stock market of that. But when the stimulus package is actually confirmed and they, and they sign the deal, then you sell on that. So what people do, I think, sometimes is they will take that same sort of knowledge of the stock market of buy the rumor and sell the news, and they take it to their spiritual lives as well. And so what they hear is they, oh, Madonna is following Kabbalah. Maybe I'll buy the rumor on that, and I'll start following that. Or Paris Hilton, I heard she started studying about Islam. Well, maybe I'll go, and I'll kind of follow that, and I'll kind of see what's going with that. But what we really want to look at is what is the news? And the good news for this year is that Jesus Christ, he died for our sins on the cross, and he was raised from the dead. And if we believe in him, then we have eternal life. I was telling another story about Joseph Scriven, who actually wrote the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The song says this, it says, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And, and you think about, oh, you know, when, when Joseph Scriven must have written that, it must have been when he was having a really good time in his life or things were going well or this or that, whatever. That is not the case. He graduated from Trinity College in 1842 over in Dublin, Ireland. And when he graduated, he was supposed to meet his fiance. And right before he was supposed to meet his fiance in 1843, she fell off of a horse and died. And in his sorrow and in his shame, in his tough times that he was having, he actually wrote the the words to that song, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. And so, you know, 2020 has been a tough year. 2021 may be tougher. I don't know what the future holds, and neither does anybody else. But when you think about it, no matter how tough of a time you're having, we can sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. Praise God. So I was looking in 2 Timothy 4 and starting in verse 1, and it says, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering." And the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. For there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but but to also all who have longed for his appearing. 
Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he has loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, and my scrolls, especially the par- parchments. Alexander the, the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on guard against him because he has strongly opposed our message. At my first offense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord has stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every every evil attack and will bring me safely to his kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And when I think about that, this is the Apostle Paul, who maybe other than Jesus Christ was really, I mean, people just thought about it. And they, and they, you, you look at it, it, Jesus, but people thought, oh man, the Apostle Paul, he was a great guy. He had all these things going on. He was responsible partially for bringing Christianity through all these different areas of the world. And yet at the end of his life, nobody stood with him. Nobody stood with him. And, and when I think about that, it's like, man, he's, it, if you're, you're standing up for Jesus right now, if the whole world is against you, then you have a lot of good company. You know, it says in another verse in Hebrews 12, verse 1, and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the the race marked out for us. And so we're going to have tough times. It says if you follow Jesus, you will suffer persecutions. But when I read the end of the Bible, I realize that we win. And you look in Revelation chapter 22, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts— The idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. And so when I read that, it says, you know what? You're gonna we're gonna have tough times as followers, followers or followers of Christ. But in the end, we win. In the end, if you if you follow Jesus and if you make it through, if you endure till the end, we get the crown of life. And friends, that's what I'm looking for. In Jesus' name. Amen. We have just finished the Christmas season. We've got a new year coming. So what what a blessing. What a what child is this? And that question should be on our mind every day because that child grew up to be the savior. That child was the savior and was born. We celebrate his birth at Christmas time. Question is, have you experienced his new birth all year round? All year round. And and you were talking about was this morning Isaiah chapter Isaiah six. Chapter is that right? Six, yep. What's in Isaiah 6? 700 yeah. years before the baby was even born, Michael. 700 years they had this baby named. Hundreds of prophecies in Scripture fulfilled by Jesus, where he would be born, his name, his four names. The four names of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 are so profound. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I think a lot of people think of, of Jesus or God as a thing that's kind of far out there, but... You know, Jesus actually says in Scripture, no longer do I call you servants, he says, but I call you friends. And, and can you have a personal relationship with Jesus, too? Well, that's the beauty of it. That's why he became a man. See, we forget the whole point of the incarnation, of God, the Word becoming flesh, 
so that we could know God. The whole point of Him being born, unto us a child is given, unto, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The whole point of that is so that we could become sons. Yeah. The beauty of the incarnation, of God coming to us, it's unto us. We couldn't get to Him. There's nothing we can do to get to Him. Interview after interview on this program. The name of this program, if not for God. Right. If God hadn't come unto us, if the shepherds, if the angels hadn't said to the shepherds, unto you is born this day, and the study of David, if Christ had not come unto his own, John 1, 10 mm -hmm. and 11, then we never would have been here. There would have been no if not for God. That mm -hmm. is the great, the great interruption. When God became a man, when he invaded human history, when the word became flesh and dwelt among us, John 1, 14, and we beheld his amazing glory. This is what changed everything. And this is who he is, wonderful, counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Each one of these aspects, attributes, is both divinity and humanity, all bundled into one precious Christ child. And Jesus has done something that we could never do. I, I heard a story by, by the way, we've got a book by J.D. Greer I'm going to read. It's What Are You Going to Do With Your Life by J.D. Greer. But heard a story that J.D. Greer spoke of, and he said that there was a little woodpecker, and he kept on pecking away at this telephone pole, and he says, and, and one night... The woodpecker's away, and, and there's a thunderstorm, and God splits the telephone pole in half. And the woodpecker goes back and tells his friends, he says, look what I did. <laughs> well, it was God. And so mm. what we're doing is we're just pecking away, and then God comes and, and, and splits the telephone pole. But, you know, I, I believe that God wants to work with us. And, and so we do have a part. Is that right? Well, look at each of those names of Jesus right there in the beginning of Isaiah chapter 9, 700 years before he's born. Mm -hmm. Look at what the opposite of each of those implies about us. Wonder. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are, we are subnormal. We are dull. We mm -hmm. are humans. And we are in desperate need of something to fill our soul. Mm -hmm. Right? We need something wonderful. We say yes. wonderful and awesome about a lot of things besides Jesus. Like, I think that's an awesome sweater. <laughs> you got the awesome, ugly Christmas sweater contest winner right there on you, buddy. We'll have to take a picture before we go out. Yeah. We'll post it when we play this program back so there we can go. see the sweater. <laughs> it's my favorite Christmas sweater I've seen in a long time, worn by the Zwickster himself. If not for God, I don't think that sweater would be on you right now. It's so cool. It's got There's so many things happening on there. But you think about, we say awesome about a lot of things. But truly, the only there's only one awesome thing. If if only if you could only say awesome about one thing, it would be a person, mm -hmm. right? It would have to be Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how are we, you know, I love that joy of the world and wonders of his love. Mm -hmm. How often are we in awe? Mm -hmm. In Acts, they had signs and wonders, right? Like miracles happened, but they were wonders. Why? Because a sign that showed God's greatness and the wonder that followed. Everyone was in awe and wonder of God. That's right. When's the last time we just said, hey, I want to be still and know that I am God? Mm -hmm. Psalm 46, 11, when am I just going to be in awe of him, right? So so God is awesome because we're not. He's counselor because we're dumb as dirt. We're ignorant. We don't have it figured out. Mm -hmm. We don't. We can't, we can't create the world. Mm -hmm. We can't create the eyeball. Mm -hmm. We can't, you know, we can't, we can't cure cancer. We can't, we got a lot. I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, of course, yeah, we, we can talk about the accolades of man, the accomplishments of man, all the humanism and the, and the things mm -hmm. like that. Right. But he's counselor. Because he's the all-knowing, omniscient one. That's right. He knows everything. So we're ignorant. Thank God he's a wonderful counselor. He's almighty God. Why? Because we're weak. Yeah. We're hopeless, helpless. What does it say in Romans chapter 5? When we were without strength, uh -huh. without hope, without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. We're incapable of anything. But let me tell you what I bring to the equation with God. Hmm. I bring my sin. Yeah. That's what I bring. What do you bring to the table? I bring my sin. Right. I bring everything that damns me. Mm -hmm. And he brings everything that saves me. He That's is right. mighty to save. That's right. He is almighty God. He's almighty in the creation. He's almighty in the new creation. So he's almighty God. So he's almighty God because we're weak. Yeah. He's everlasting father. Why? Because our fathers are broken. There's a, there's a father curse. 40% of kids today have no father. They have no dad. Mm -hmm. Fathers have left us. They're, they're abusive. You're, how many of you, your dad hit you when you were growing up? Yeah. How many of you had never had a dad hug you? I still see today dads, and I've had to say, dad, you hug your son right now with all of us watching. Hug your son. And it's painful for that guy to do. Why? Because his dad hated him and never hugged him. 
He didn't even know he hated him. I mean, there's just this pain, this father wound, right? Mm. Jesus is the father, and he's the father of time, the father of eternity. And that's in that verse, it's not talking about him being father, you know, usurping the role of father, the first member of the Trinity, Father God, the, you know, mm-hmm. the Heavenly Father. But he's the second member of the Trinity, co-equal with that eternal father. But he's everlasting father in that he is authority over everything, and he is the one who came after us. Remember, Adam was the first Adam. Adam was the father of the human race, right? He was father Adam. Mm-hmm. He was the father of humans. He was the father of creation. He was the, you know, the father of the, his seed, right? Well, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ is the second Adam. Mm-hmm. He is the perfect, the perfect man mm-hmm. because he's God. Yeah. So there's a sense, very sense to which he fathers us, Jesus does, in the nurturing and coming after us and and being our sheep, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, they know they are mine, yeah, see? Yeah. So there's this very real sense that everything we haven't had in terms of a nurturing, timeless, ageless, eternal, never dying, never weakening Father is Jesus. And right. then there's finally Prince of Peace. Right. Well, look at what we have. Yeah. A, we're, we're a fatherless bunch with fallen fathers, including me as a fallen father. Mm-hmm. Uh, B, we're, we're ignorant, that's why we need a counselor. C, we're weak yeah. and helpless, that's why we need a mighty God. Yeah. And then finally... We're at war. We're in conflict. How many of us yeah. are just buzzing around, just absolutely empty? The battle, the, the corona's exposed us for being people that are just so frivolous and pointless, and we're angry, and we're arguing about masks and all these other things, mm-hmm. when in fact, he's the Prince of Peace. Right. So he fills out everything we fall short, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23, Jesus Christ came. God demonstrates his love toward us. While we were yet sinners, sinners Christ, Christ died, died for us. For us. For God so loved the world. He gave His only Son. He gave. So God had to come to us. We couldn't get to Him. And He completes us like no one else can. And all of that comes, takes us back to awe and wonder that He is awesome. The question is, are you connected with Him? Is He your counsel? Do you go to Him first, or do you got to call your, your buddy or your mom or your daddy first for yeah. advice? Why don't you call yeah. Him first? Why don't you hit your knees and say, God, i got a problem. Only you can solve it. And go to Him. Yeah. Why is He our last resort instead of our first response? Right? right? Why is prayer our last, you know? So am I trusting, am I going to him as my wonderful counselor? He's mm-hmm. an awesome counselor. Mm-hmm. Number two, am I going to him for help as my mighty God? Right. Do I realize that he's got my back? I'm not alone right. here. I got almighty God on my side. You right. have no idea. You don't know right. who you're messing with. You right. stole my car. Guess what? Right. You didn't steal my car. Right. You stole God's car. That's right. You want to stand before him? Yeah. I'm going to pray God will have mercy on you. Every time something's stolen from me or I'm harmed or someone comes at me or threatens me and it's happened a lot, guess what? I pray almighty God's mercy on them. Because yeah. they don't know who they're messing with. They're not messing with me. I'm a king's kid. I've yeah. got his stamp. Right. He is a mighty God. Mighty right. to save, mighty to serve, mighty to fight our battles. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power, Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, chapter 10. We have an entire armor that's his armor. The shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit that's powerful. We wield infinite, powerful blades in the sword of the Spirit. Do you, you, know, do you have any idea, believer, what you have? The Word of God, quick and powerful, sharp than a two-edged sword, Hebrews 4.12. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's everlasting Father. He's eternal. He's not bound by time, and He nurtures and loves you like crazy. And then finally, He's the Prince of Peace. He brings peace into your conflict, whatever it is, whoever it is. There's not one soul on this planet you can't be reconciled with because of His perfect peace. Only He can bring peace in your marriage, in your relationships, with your kids, with your prodigals. Whoever it is that hates you right now or you hate, you go to him and let the Prince of Peace rule in that situation, Colossians 3.15. He is our peace who's broken down every wall that separates us. Ephesians 2, 3, and 4, he's our peace. That's it, man. So those that's... are the four names of God. Seven years before Jesus was born, we need the Savior. We need to be in awe of this Savior. He's ready to do mighty things on our behalf. That's awesome. And, and, and Stu, Stu Epperson, the first words of Jesus. But, you know, it's interesting how... <clears throat> how this Christmas season, and I know we, we've just passed it, but the Christmas season always kind of ties in with Easter. He was born to That's die. Exactly right. Isaiah 53, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering mm. and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds 
we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? Mm. You know, he was he, he was dying there on the cross right yep. and they said, crucify him. That's right. For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was punished. Wow. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence. Right. He had done no, no violence, nor was any dis deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. But he will justify many, That's right. and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressions, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank That's God it. for that. Thank God Jesus Christ, he was born to die so we could be reborn, born again, and live with him forever. Mild he lay his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. There's a quote in my book, to the pagan or the unbeliever, Christmas Day is the end. Drag the tree to the curb, take down the lights, look for your presents, get the receipts out, get ready to go back, leftovers, mm -hmm. all that, family mm -hmm. leaves, cousin mm -hmm. has gone, boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. To the believer, it's just the beginning. beginning. Because therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. creation. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. So are you new in Christ? Is he living in you and through you? And who are you telling this message to? Get out there and tell people about the only one who's the wonderful counselor, almighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. His name is Jesus. And the name of this show is, if not for God, if not for God. This is the Truth Network.